Okay, thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. You raised so important but very difficult question. I don't know whether I have an answer to that. Since I'm a trade uh, expert, uh, I will say something about the trade uh, er area, uh, starting with a brief uh, remarks on issues uh, <coughs> related to uh, the supply chain, global supply chain, and uh, possibly I want to touch upon the possibility of future world trade governance. I will start with the three major causes uh, for the recent global supply chain restructuring. Uh, first, as you know very well, uh, COVID-19 pandemic and the war between Russia and Ukraine and various sanctions uh, against Russia are causing supply chain disruptions. Second, the U.S. measures, uh, trade measures, uh, based on the national security concerns are also causing supply chain distortions. For example, I think you, you, you know this will, uh, very well, additional tariffs on steel and aluminum, uh, also a quota imposed on uh, South Korean steel export and export control on China for semiconductor and semiconductor equipment uh, distorting trade in uh, those uh, products. Third, trade policies are based on politically motivated uh, nationalism, which prefer domestic uh, production and reshoring are also causing supply chain restructuring. So all of these are affecting international trade and uh, supply chains of global firms. Looking at these developments, uh, several concerns are emerging. First, uh, we noticed that uh, countries like the United States, which have criticized China for giving heavy government subsidies in specific sectors, now provide industrial subsidies to promote their own domestic sector, like a semiconductor. According to U.S. Chips and uh, Science Act, the U.S. government will provide $52 billion of subsidies in the semiconductor sector. This means the industrial policies could be revived in most countries, including the United States and probably the EU, triggering uh, industrial subsidies competitions among major countries. We worry that uh, this, uh, might, uh, we might lose the opportunity to uh, reform the rules on industrial subsidies at the WTO. Second, uh, some trade policy measures based on national security concerns, green economy, or politically motivated nationalism, such as those in the U.S. Uh, Inflation Reduction Act, may violate the WTO rules of MFM principle and the national treatment. For example, the IRA includes tax credit uh, provisions which discriminate against electric vehicles produced or assembled outside the North American region. Regarding these aspects of the U.S. Uh, legislation, some trade experts, including those even in the U.S., are questioning whether the U.S. is in support of defending and reforming the rules-based multilateral trading system or simply uh, pushing for anti-China as well as America First policies. The third concern is about the issue of decoupling between the U.S. and China. As you know very well, uh, the U.S. economies and uh, many other economies in the world are already deeply interconnected with the Chinese economy through many years of globalization and trade. Therefore, it may not be realistic and even infeasible to suddenly cut off all trade between the U.S. and China. I think we should consider limiting the U.S. decoupling from China to a few technologically sensitive sectors which are directly related to national security. Even in the case of semiconductor, decoupling should focus on a few technologically advanced chips. Lastly, but not least, I have another concern which is related to the decoupling issues I have just mentioned. We now know that the Indo-Pacific economic framework participating countries are discussing the content of the agreement of the IPEF proposed by the United States. Of course, we, don't know, we do not know the details yet, but probably uh, in the second pillar of economic, uh, in the Pacific economic framework, there will be some provisions for supply chain resilience, which might exclude China in their supply chain for certain products and materials. If this is the case, we can easily expect 
China to react in one way or another. As a So uh, trade experts are actually saying that, that these kind of uh, confrontation between uh, uh, IPEF uh, participating countries and China might be leading uh, to a serious kind of trade war, uh, which we are really concerned. Well, these are my concerns to share with you. As a trade economist, uh, I do not see the world trade governance. We talk about that in the first session, particularly the multilateral trading system of the WTO properly deals with these issues, these problems. Furthermore, no major countries formally raise this uh, concern these days. So in this context, I would like to suggest that the WPC participants start to raise appropriate voices. I particularly think that the, our session is the right place to discuss uh, some uh, ideas about the future global trade governors. I don't provide any specific solutions, but I raise the issue. Well, I stop here. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very, very much indeed, Tayo. It was very, very clear. And uh, this danger of uh, nationalism uh, introducing its own fragmentation at the global level and also the decoupling between US and China that you mentioned and the, f the potential war, the potential trade war is extremely important in our perspective.